Hi again. I'd like to continue with the uh, discussion of the navigation controller. And in the last video, I created um, a simple project in Xcode using Storyboard. And I created these two views. And I connected the two views with the um, navigation controller, right? So I, I set up action segues here between the two views using these buttons. Um, and, you know, that that looks like this, right? We'll do a quick example of it again. You know, when I click on the next button, the next view slides up from the bottom. And when I click the previous button, the previous view slides up from the bottom. Um, this uh, this is not quite, it doesn't quite look right. Um, and part of the reason is there's a sort of a visual language that when you go to another view, the view slides in from the from the right. Okay, and when you go to the previous view, the view slides in from the left. Okay, when it slides up from the bottom, it feels like you're on the same page, but you're adding something on top, right? So it's kind of a different uh, navigation feel, right? So what I'd like to do here is I'd like to set up um, the navigation controller. And the navigation controller will keep track of a history, and it'll remember which view came before which view and allow us to go backwards in time. So, uh, so let's do that. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to delete these two action segues. So I'll just click on them here. You can just click on the line in Storyboard and hit delete on the keyboard. Okay, so now these are two, two views are disconnected, right? So what I'd like to do is I'd like to add a navigation controller. And the navigation controller, um, don't, don't follow this step here. I'm going to show it to you, and then we're going to actually rebuild it, right? If I look at the object library here, there's um, an object called Navigation Controller. And when you drag this out into the view, it comes with two views. So this first one is the Navigation Controller itself, and this view actually contains another view. And it's connected with an action segue. And you'll notice the icon for this segue is a little different than the other one. This is called relationship segue. And what's, what it's saying here is that this view is the navigation controller. And it has a child view, which is this view. And this view is the root view controller. So the navigation controller keeps track of a stack of view controllers. And every time you go to another view, to another view it adds it to the top of the stack. And so by keeping the stack, it can, it, it can understand how to go backwards in the stack. So when you want to go back, you can remove the last view controller from the stack and go to the previous one. And the root view controller is the last one at the bottom of the stack, and so you can never go past that one, right? Um, so this is what we want to set up, but really what we want is we want this first view to be the root view controller, right? So I'm going to actually delete the... Um, the uh, navigation controller that I added there. And there's another way to add the navigation controller. So if you have an existing project, and I, I usually do this, it's kind of easier for me. So um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to select this first view here, make sure it has a blue outline. And then I'll go to the editor menu and I'll choose embed in navigation controller. Okay. And so what that's going to do is it's going to add a navigation controller here and then embed this one as the root view controller. Okay, so it set up the relationship segue for us. Um, and it also moved the, the input point or the starting point to the navigation controller because remember the arrow was pointing to this guy. So this little arrow right here is the entry point. It means like the program should begin here with this view. Okay. So let's resize this. We have a little more space here, and I'll move this over. Okay, so now you can see I've got my three views. And th this view we won't really see. It's sort of an outer container, like a shell, and it will contain the other views. Notice that it does come with a, a navigation bar at the top, right? So that's kind of a little feature of the navigation controller. It comes with this bar. You can actually hide this if you don't want to see it, but it, by default it shows, okay? And now that this is the, the root view controller, right, it also gets the navigation bar, okay? Now let's reset up our, our segue here. So the next button, right, I'm going to control drag again. So I'll hold the control key and then click and drag. 
and I drag into the view here so it says view controller at the bottom there and the view controller is highlighted and then it says action segue and I'll choose show segue again okay and so now you see you got the show segue now also notice that this view all of a sudden got a um, a navigation bar so what does that mean well that means that um, that this is part of this navigation controller right so it's inheriting the bar from here now let's watch how it works notice I'm gonna leave the previous button untouched so I didn't even use that one uh, I'll click play and uh, here we go yeah so it tests and then there's my project there and I'll click the next button and you can see this time the transition slides in from the right and it automatically gives me a back button just like in your browser so clicking the back button will take us to the previous view which slides in from the left okay so uh, so that's the navigation controller right it's pretty easy um, and you can have as many views as you want managed by the navigation controller okay um, let's stop that and add another view so I'll go up to the top of my list of you know view objects here object library and I'll grab the view controller and resize it for convenience you don't have to resize it if you have a bigger monitor but my monitor is pretty small so I'm gonna resize that so I have a little more space here and then we'll get another um, image view from here and I'll fit it into the screen and we'll add some constraints and uh, I'll just check all four of these I don't need to do the width and height right because the four sides you know if you set the four sides it determines the width and the height and the position right because you know if, if the edges have to meet these sides then that will also set the width and height you know because if the screen is wider then the edges will have to you know expand to fit it right so you know you, in general the rule is if you have four constraints that that's enough to set the position of something okay and so uh, so now let's set the image here in the image view and I'll change it to aspect fill again and uh, maybe um, maybe I need a next button here so maybe I'll grab the button here and drag it into the view and make it a little bigger oops I accidentally dragged the image view there and then I'll set the background color again like we did previously right so anyway so there we go and maybe I'll make this button say you know next or something oops I guess I gotta close this thing there we go right and then maybe I'll, I'll I've got my button set up it's got oh, did I add constraints yeah maybe we gotta add some constraints so I'll, I'll click here I'll do the lower right and bottom and then I'll uh, set the width and height so now we've got some constraints and so now I'll add a segue from this next button to the third view controller so I'll hold the control key click on the button and drag into the view right so now this view controller has a segue going to it and it gets the navigation bar now I'm gonna leave the previous button since we're getting the back button at the top we actually don't need this but I'm gonna do another example coming up where I get rid of the nav bar and I'll set up my own previous button to do that we have to use a little bit of code in Swift to make that happen okay um, so anyway so here we go we got our view and if I test the project again I'll see our first view and when I click the next button it slides in from the right and gives us the back button and if I click the next view again the new view slides in from the right and if I click back it goes to the second and then to the first view right so the navigation controller is giving us the back button and keeping track of the navigation right and since the navigation controller arranges the views you know internally as a stack it remembers the history 
and therefore the transition becomes a slide left to right because the computer understands that you can navigate forward and backward through the history, right? So anyway, so, uh, so that should set you up there. And uh, I'll do another video where we set up our own previous button rather than using the back button up here. But for right now, I'll just stop the video here. And I hope that was useful to, to people, okay? Thanks for watching.